king had a dream. We all know the dream that Martin Luther King had. He had a dream about social integration as opposed to social separation. He spearheaded a dream where equal opportunities became a reality in a whole country. Everyone in this room has a dream, whether it's big or whether it's small. I have lots of dreams about the diversity I'd like to see in our schools in this country. But before I share my dreams with you, I'd like to share some of the realities with you. So I invite you to close your eyes. I'm going to take you on a journey to South London. I've taught in schools in South London for the last 12 years. We're going to meet in Tooting. Tooting is a melting pot in South London. We're going to meet near the market. In the market, you're going to hear a variety of different languages being spoken. You're going to see a variety of different fruits and vegetables being sold. We're going to jump on the bus, and we're going to journey to a local school. On the bus, we're going to see those different people from those different places talking in different languages. As we get to the school I used to work at, we'll be greeted at the gates by some of my former colleagues, the SLT, all male, all white. We'll go through the school gates, and one of my former students, Nikita, will become our, our guide for the morning. She will navigate us through the playground, a cacophony of different languages being spoken, 37 to be precise. We'll go into reception. We'll admire the beautiful black and white photos of beautiful black and white children adorning the walls of reception. We're in to visit an English lesson. We go down to watch Miss Smith teach a Year 8 English lesson. There's some students newly arrived to England who are sat with a teaching assistant who's helping them access the language. They're studying war poetry. The walls have pictures of war poets and soldiers, all white, all male, wearing army uniforms. We leave the lesson and we walk down the corridor to go to the senior leadership meeting in the boardroom. One of the displays catches our eyes. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's brighter than the other displays in the corridor. We ask Nikita what this display is about. Well, miss, it's October, and in October it's Black History Month. And in Black History Month we celebrate diversity. So this display has all the pictures of all the diversity in our school. We carry on to the boardroom, and in the boardroom, the senior leaders are sat waiting for us, all white, all male. The photos on the wall of the leadership teams, past and present, and the governors, equally of the same background. We leave the boardroom, we go back to reception. Our final impressions of the school are those beautiful black and white photos. Please open your eyes. This is the reality of the schools that I've worked in for 12 years. Black and white photos of beautiful black and white children represent the diverse communities that I've served. Communities with 55 to 60 percent of the communities not being white. But however, the staff in these schools do not represent those communities. As opposed to a rainbow of diversity, our schools more likely resemble a Dulux colour chart. They get lighter and paler and maler as you move from the cleaners who are black women to the head teachers who are white men. We're here today to think about how to inspire the next generation. We build our children up in our classrooms every day. We tell them they can be who they want to be. They can be anything they put their hearts and their minds to. But can they? Do we warn them about the glass ceilings? The glass ceilings that are imposed on you if you're a woman or if you're from a black, Asian, minority, ethnicity background? I don't think we warn them enough about the realities. One in four of our children in our schools are not white. But out of the 27,000 head teachers in this country, only 270 of them are not white. There's only one CEO in the country who is not white. That is the reality of the schools we serve. So I do have diverse dreams. I have dreams for the children who I teach. I have dreams whereby we have diverse people delivering the diverse curriculum. The diverse curriculum showcases diverse role models. The assemblies and the activities in the school celebrate the diversity of the communities we serve. The senior leaders making decisions about the communities we serve are also from diverse backgrounds, as are the governors, as are the policy makers, as are the politicians. 
Because when you have the same people making decisions all the time, you develop a groupthink situation where nothing ever changes. We've talked today about the recruitment crisis, the retention crisis. In fact, we've got a talent spotting crisis. We have got hidden figures in every school, aspirant black, Asian, minority ethnicity educators who want to be leaders, who are leaving the education system because their, their value is not being recognised by the schools they work in. And I'll share an anecdote with you. I'm currently leading a, one of the diversity and equality grants. And we've got 75 black, Asian, minority ethnic leaders in that group. We had our launch event in South London. They were all together in one room in a school, a very diverse school. That group of educators caused a stir. Children were walking past, turning their heads and coming back to inquire, why were there so many black people in one room in their school? They'd never seen so many diverse educators together before. The educators in the room said, this is the reality. They think we're going to have a riot because we're black and we're in a school and we're all together. I find that quite shocking. We pride ourselves on being a diverse country, but do we live those values? A lot of people think they promote diversity, they are gender equality champions. They might think it, do they say it? Do they call it out? I've been asked to speak at three events in the last six weeks about diversity. Not a single person on any of those three programmes was from a non-white background. So I said to the organisers, I will not speak at an event about diversity when you're not promoting diversity with the people you are selecting to speak at your events. In the 12 years I've, sought, I've been a leader in London, three schools, three senior leadership teams, three boardrooms, I've worked with two non-white colleagues, two women from a black, Asian, minority ethnicity background. The statistics just don't add up. So I really think we need to be thinking about how we can affect change in our schools. The careers guidance for our young people, how can we empower them to make those decisions? International Women's, Week this, Women's Day this year, the theme was Be Bold for Change. I would like us all to think today about how we can be bolder for change. How can we be champions and change agents and make differences for society? Ultimately, we will then inspire a more diverse workforce. Thank you very much.